Hey everybody, it's me Blanche with Feast in the Middle East and I'm going to share with you one of my favorite fish recipes that is inspired by the country of Morocco. But first, I wanna show you where I get my fish. It's at an unconventional place, the farmer's market, and I'm gonna show you exactly why. This is where I can get community sustainable fish. And one of my favorite places to get it from is called H&H &H Fresh Fish. I've been going there for years. And today I'm really excited to see what is their fresh catch of the day. Let's head on over there right now. Check out your farmer's market and see if you have a place like this. I think it's important, like this is Will. Hello, Will. <laughs> So why do you think it's important for people to support community sustainable fishermen? They have a good idea of what's what's in season, what's not. Uh, they should be very knowledgeable about uh, yeah, like recipes, uh, anything like that. And also what's great is the, the fish that these fishermen caught, it's all wild caught. So there aren't any PCBs or polyfluorocarbons in there, which is carcinogenic and cancerous. And like he said, when you get fish that's fresh caught that day, there's no way it's gonna be fishy. Like I've never purchased fish from here that's been fishy in my life. And I have to tell you guys, like whether fish it's salmon, be fishy. it's yeah, fish should not be fishy, right? So like what as far as I'm looking for a white fish, and this is what's great too, is they can recommend to you what you need compared, you know, considering what kind of recipe you need. So I need I need a white fish, like a delicate white fish. Delicate white fish. Okay. Uh, what what do you have so for today? Today I'd say probably go with the local trolley sole. I love the trolley sole. Okay. Uh, that or we have some Alaskan halibut right now. Okay. Um, no, I like the trolley sole. Halibut is very like very like dense. dense. Yeah. yeah, I want yep. something light. Okay. So awesome. Yeah, I'd like to buy a pound of the trolley sole. Alright. All right. So let's see what kind of bag we got there. That's just under a pound. Perfect. Probably three fillets in there. Is that all right for you? Yeah, that's perfect. That's all right. Perfect. Now, the thing is, I would say the prices are pretty comparable, if not less, than places like Whole Foods, but you are getting the best quality there is. So, like, when it comes to the food that you put in your body, I find that that's more important than getting, like, a designer bag or something like that. You know well, what I mean? So, uh, my mom always used to tell me about uh, food. She was really into healthy food. Right. And uh, she used to use the hou uh, a house example. Uh -huh. So you can either spend money on whatever and buy cheap food, and then it's equivalent to building your house with untreated wood that's going to be filled with termites in a few years. Or you can splurge and you get the nice fish or whatever kind of food it is, and that's equivalent to getting nice treated wood, and the house is going to stand and it's going to last and it's not going to deteriorate over time. Think of the house as your body. Absolutely, your mom is so smart. I love that. <laughs> Super smart. Um, Can I tell you? And look at they pack it in ice. I love it, and I can't wait to work with this fish when I get home. The other thing is, you're mentioning Whole Foods. A lot of times it'll say frozen, but we don't realize is how long it's been sitting frozen for. Right. You know, fish that like commercial fish sits frozen for quite a while, and people just in the consumer head it just you know a few a few days is kind of what you're thinking, but it could be two weeks even longer True. sometimes. Yeah, I know that they, they caught the fish either yesterday or today. I know that about this company. So please, seek community supported fish in your neighborhood. I'm sure there's some wherever you are. And if you're near, if you're in the Bay Area in, in San Francisco or beyond, H&H, &H, man. Check it out, they're at the food. Most, most farmer's markets in the Bay Area. Exactly, right. exactly. Thank you, Will. Absolutely, have a good awesome. rest of your day, you guys. You Thank, Thank you. you. turning something like white fish into something fabulous is in the marinade. With the right marinade, it gets into the fibers of the food, creating an amazingly tender texture and melt in your mouth flavor. And today I'm going to share with you a magical marinade from Morocco that you could use with fish, chicken, and even vegetables. All right, so we are going to make today baked fish with charmoula sauce. There it is, it's in my cookbook on page 153, so if you guys have my cookbook, you could follow along, and if you don't, you can get it at feastinthemiddleeast.com. Now, to my Arabic speakers, I did not say a swear word. I said, shermula sauce. It's not another swear word, which I will not say on this show, okay? You guys know what I'm talking about. 
So this sauce is super versatile. Like I said, you could use it with any kind of protein or even vegetables. And there are a few key components that you have to have in this sauce, which I'm gonna show you right now. The secret to any shermula sauce is cilantro. Now, if you don't like cilantro, of course you could use parsley. No North African sauce is complete without garlic. The more the better. I have about four, four or five cloves of garlic. You could use more if you wish. And to bring that earthy spice flavor, you need two types of spices. One is cumin and one is paprika. And the paprika brings a nice color to the fish. Of course, to bring it all together, we're going to use some extra virgin olive oil. I like Harvest Peace. If you want a discount code, just go to my description box. And the key vegetables to use are bell peppers and tomatoes. And of course, lemon juice. The citrus is essential to bring that freshness in the fish. First, take any kind of large onion and slice into thin slices. This is going to be caramelized, which will add a nice sweetness to this dish. Next, add sweet bell pepper. I prefer orange bell peppers because they are the sweetest of the bunch and bring a beautiful color, but you could use yellow, red, or even green bell peppers if you prefer. Time to saute the veggies. I use about a tablespoon or two of olive oil. Make sure you heat the pan first with the olive oil before you add the onions and saute until nice and soft. And then after that, add the bell peppers and saute until the bell peppers are just soft. I don't know what it is, maybe it's ASMR, but the sizzling sound always soothes my nerves whenever I'm cooking. Okay, so once the bell peppers and onions get nice and soft, I'm going to put them at the bottom of the baking dish. This is going to be the base of the entire dish. Now, would you look at these gorgeous fish fillets that I got at the farmer's market? I'm telling you guys, nothing beats getting your fish from community supported fishermen. I mean, they just catch it fresh that day. There's no fishy smell. And I'm going to just season it with some salt and pepper. It's really that simple. To add another layer of sweetness and color, slice up about three to four Roma tomatoes and put them on top of the fish. My number one cooking rule is to season every ingredient you add to a recipe. That'll ensure maximum flavor. So I'm just adding salt and pepper to the tomatoes as well. No shermula sauce is complete without the addition of parsley and cilantro. So I grabbed a bunch of both and I'm coarsely chopping them before I add them to the food processor with the rest of the ingredients. Okay, now for the special sauce, I'm going to add the herbs to a food processor, and to that, I'm going to add the juice of one lemon. Other essential Moroccan spices are one teaspoon of cumin, followed by one teaspoon of paprika, which will add a beautiful color. Then we're going to whiz it all together with one quarter cup of olive oil. You could add more if you wish. Then we're gonna blend it all up till it achieves the consistency of a pesto. Now pour this gorgeous sauce all over the fish and the vegetables. Bake at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes or until the fish flakes easily with a fork. This makes an easy meal for any day of the week and it's super high in protein, low in carb. I'm gonna take my first bite right here. Uh, get some of that onions and that sweet bell pepper and that beautiful cilantro. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love the combination of flavors. Like you get sweetness from the onions and the bell peppers, and then you get that like really earthiness from the cumin and the paprika. So for more healthy Middle Eastern recipes, go to feastinthemiddleeast.com and check out my cookbook. It's really fun to travel to other countries. Egypt, today is Morocco. I mean, really, I've been getting the itch to travel so much. I don't know about you guys. And when I can't travel, I just look up the cuisine of that country and try to recreate it in my own kitchen. And I feel like I was transported to another place, at least for that meal, right? Please hit that like button to help out the algorithm and subscribe and I'll be back with more easy recipes.